What's up today guys, back at the RT clinic and I'm gonna do a quick video today about the down and dirty of how to, to manage a vent as quick as we can go. Ready, set, cut to the intro. All right, so let's get started. This is the, the main screen when you turn the ventilator on. It'll have alarms across the top. This can be quickly reset. It says incompatible flow sensor, but that's absolutely fine. Go to new adult. Anytime you touch a button here, you're gonna see this light up down here. That means you have to activate it by hitting enter. And right now it's admitting the patient. So at the top it says perform check. That's already been performed. We're going to get that out of the way and then we're going to go to um, our initial settings. So you look over here on this side, ventilator settings. These are our different modes. So to keep it really generic, VC, AC, VC, SIMV, S, uh, SPN, spontaneous CPAP pressure support or pressure control, assist control. Let's keep it easy and just do the first three. VC stands for volume control and AC stands for assist control. SIMV stands for synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, which we don't deal a lot with. And the last one is the patient's breathing on their own and we're given pressure support to CPAP. So let's start with the first mode. We have FiO2. If we want to start at something different, we touch, we adjust here, and then we confirm by hitting the button in. So let's just go with 60%, hit the button in. Tidal volume, this is in milliliters. So we're gonna, the goal is really eight to 10 milliliters per kilogram ideal body weight, generically 500. TI, that's inspiratory time, don't worry about that much. That's gonna kind of vary because this is an auto flow device. So we leave it at 1.2, that the patient can actually do what they want on their own. Uh, that's the beauty of this device. And then respiratory rate of 12. So that's their current respiratory rate, touch, adjust, confirm if we wanna go anywhere from 12 to 20 is usually we're gonna start. Don't worry about the slope. And peep, we always start at eight and we adjust that for oxygenation. So all of this looks good. I'm gonna X this out just like a Windows screen. X that out there and let's go to start ventilation. So you can hit start there. You can also go down here. It comes back to the screen. Start ventilation, touch, confirm. So some basic things you need to know about volume control ventilation is especially volume control AC is that you're going to deliver 14 500 per minute. If the patient takes a spontaneous breath, it will finish the entire breath for them. This is what I call the resting mode. This is assist control most likely used if you have a patient that has, um, let's say early ARDS or late ARDS, you could be using some mode like this where you're resting the patient. Assist control is the absolute most um, popular in those cases. If you look over here, these are all, this is all your data. So this is your settings. This is your data here. Uh, other buttons you, that we use quite a bit is O2 suction, touch and confirm on that. That will silence the alarms and give 100% of oxygen while we suction. And so um, it'll keep any uh, chance for them to have any kind of ectopy and things like that. So these are all looking appropriate settings. So those are some good places to start. Let's look at the next mode, since this is a quick review, SIMV. If I go to SIMV, you see we added one more number on there, that's pressure support. So let's go to SIMV, we're gonna turn that on. What this means is the patient is gonna get 14, 500 per minute but when they take their own breath, it's gonna be augmented by this pressure. You see that? It's not a full breath, it's just assisted. And you can see that assisted breath right there. This is a, a middle mode between assist control and uh, CPAP and pressure support. So we don't use it a lot, but it's one where they can breathe more on their own. Remember assist control, they can breathe on their own, but we are gonna finish every single breath. And it's really important when you're resting the patient to have them in assist control. SIMV has a tendency to wear patients out. The last mode is SPN CPAP pressure support. You see, we don't have a lot of settings on here. We have uh, FiO2 of 60, 10 over eight. And so when I put this mode on by hitting enter, you'll see it's no longer giving vent breaths, but when they take their own breath, and I'll simulate it with this, it, 
every time they take a breath, it's given them 10 centimeters of water pressure over their eight of peep of support. So what we're gonna look at in these cases when they're taking spontaneous breaths is, is their XL toddler volume appropriate for what, it, for what they need to, for the size of person they are. So let's go back to assist control. That is the final mode that you're gonna see. Uh, this is also a red alarm. Uh, red alarm this is a nice vent because it has 24, sorry, 365 degree alarm notification. And that's what you see at the top there with that being red. So, um, and then if you put them in uh, CPAP and pressure support and it doesn't work for them, it goes into what's called apnea ventilation. If you come in the patient, you see, you come in the room, you see your patient is in apnea ventilation. What that means is, is that the ventilator took over for them. So you need to figure out what the problem was. So there's apnea ventilation. Let's reset that and put them back in assist control. Touch, confirm, reset apnea ventilation. Let's go back over to here, confirm. Now we're gonna hit, now we are in VCAC, that's assist control. Delivering breaths. Adjust the screen just a little bit. Perfect. That's a little bit better. Okay, so if we're gonna adjust rate, so obviously right here, two things that can affect somebody's CO2 to take it down, respiratory rate and tidal volume. So by increasing rate or tidal volume, you're gonna decrease their CO2 and help their pH. Um, tidal volumes we like to have, like I said before, eight to 10 millilitres per kilogram, ideal body weight, and respiratory rate is usually 12 to 20. For oxygenation, we go up on FiO2, usually to about 60, and then we start manipulating the physiological causes for uh, refractory hypoxemia, which is gonna be some issue with their PEEP, so we can increase their PEEP. People are afraid of increasing PEEP. I wouldn't be. This isn't the important number. This number right here is, because that's the total pressure inside their lungs. So we like to monitor that total pressure inside their lungs. And specifically with ARDS, I'll do an inspiratory hold here. I'll show you, hold. This is gonna monitor their plateau pressure. You'll see the next breath, we'll get a plateau pressure, or maybe not. Hold, 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 let go. So the plateau pressure tells you about their static compliance. It doesn't, didn't read it that case, but you can see it's really close to that 28, so we're probably about, about 27 or so. Plateau pressures greater than 30 to 35 are indicative of uh, ARDS and inflammatory lung disease. So uh, we watch the plateau pressure to tell us about that static compliance. That might be a little bit too much information, but that one's for free. And then the last thing you need to know, on off switch, turn it on and off here. The standby button, it will not let you just put them in standby. You have to touch, like this case, you touch it, confirm it here. They go into standby. Obviously you don't do that with a patient on it. And then I reset the alarm. And that is how a quick rundown of how to run a Drager V500. Thanks for watching.